So hello everyone. Uh, I'm very appreciated to have the opportunity to give a presentation here. It's my first time to come to India, and uh, I find that the people here is very warm. Thanks a lot. So today my topic is the latest international measurement standards and technologies for LEDs. So as we know, with the development of LED products, they are expected to be applied widely in many aspects, such as uh, indoor lighting, outdoor lighting, uh, auto lamp, and uh, etc. At the same time, in order to ensure the quality of product, so the standardization research work on LED products are also being carried out uh, intensively. Now, there are many standardization institutes uh, in the world, such as uh, CIE, IEC, both of them are very well known in the world. Of course, there are many organizations in each country, such as Standard Standardization Administration of China, uh, Bureau of India Standards, and uh, Illuminating Engineering Society of North America. It is also very famous in the world. Now, the standardization research work mainly focuses on these six following aspects uh, about uh, photometric, calorimetric performance, thermal characteristics, lifetime, uh, electrical performance, and uh, safety. Here, due to time limit, we will mainly focus on these four aspects. Now, let's talk about uh, the measurement of photometric and calorimetric. Now, there have been many important standards in the world, such as LM79. It is uh, about, uh, adopted by NSTAR. It is well, very well known in the in lighting industry. Uh, now, CIE GC 2-74 will publish another very important standard. That is uh, test method for LED lamps, luminaires, and uh, modules. This technical report will include the measurement of photometric and calorimetric quantities. After publication, it was adopted by 4E as an international standard for LED measurement. So definitely, it will be a very important standard. Uh, now let's talk about the measurement of photometric and calorimetric quantities. A very important photometric quantity is the total luminous flux. As we know, it can be calculated from integrating illuminance, just to show as this equation. This can be realized by using a compact gonio photometer. So this method is very high accuracy, but it is also a little time consuming. So, for more conveniently, many laboratories will use an uh, uh, integrating sphere system with a photometer head or spectroliometer. Uh, however, it should be pointed out in such a system, the error of self uh, absorption shall be collected in the measurement result. Uh, this is an example of integrating sphere system. It is a consist of a sphere and a spectral radiometer. We call it as a sphere spectral radiometer system. This uh, system has an advantage. That is, there is no spectral mismatch in the measurement result. That is very important. Besides, they can also measure average calorimetric uh, quantities. For the choice of spectral radiometer in such a system, we recommend to use high accuracy array spectral radiometer for optimization of measurement speed and accuracy. 
And uh, this is a product of high accuracy LA spectral emitter produced by Alfan. It has a very low street light level uh, and uh, wide linear dynamic range. Besides, it, uh, the transient main speed can as fast as microseconds. So both our main accuracy and speed can be promised. And uh, this is uh, these are part owners of this product. It has been granted by U.S. and China patents, and it uh, has been applied in hundreds of companies and institutes. Uh, now uh, next, uh, let's talk about uh, another important quantity that is uh, lumen intensity. Lumen intensity distribution is very important in lighting design. Uh, as we know. The value of lumen intensity can be calculated according to this inverse square law from the illuminance. Uh, as to measurement instrument, we could use a Gonio photometer. According to standard of CRE 121, there are three kinds of Gonio photometer, type A, type B, and type C. Usually, the late two are more common to be seen. Uh, this is a product of type B. The sample will rotate here, and it will, uh, will be met here. It will rotate about uh, this axis. So the burning position of the sample will be changed during the measurement. As we know, burning position will influence photometric and calorimetric performance. So now, more and more standards recommend to use type C gonio photometer. Uh, for type C, the sample will be mounted here, and it will rotate along this axis. So the burning position of the sample will be kept unchanged, while the detector will rotate about this axis. Except for photometric performance, calorimetric performance are also very important. They ha it has been paid uh, much attention, uh, especially about uh, spatial color distribution. As we know, for some LED products, uh, there are a problem of especially non-uniformity in its color distribution, just like this. So, in order to ensure the lighting quality, now more and more specifications and standards has given the requirements on special color distribution, uh, such as uh, specification of any star in the specification of lamp version 1.0 and uh, lamina version 1.2. Both of them have given the requirements on the specially non-uniformity of chromatistic coordinate. So do other standards. Uh, as to main instrument, we could use a Gonio spectral radiometer to measure the spatial color distribution. It is mainly consists of a Gonio meter and a spectral radiometer. So such a main instrument can measure the spectral quantity in different directions. As we know, from spectral quantity, we can calculate corresponding photometric, calorimetric, and uh, radiometric quantities. So it can be seen, uh, spectral radio, uh, gonio spectral radiometry is uh, very powerful. In order to develop uh, spectral, uh, gonio spectral radiometry more quickly, now CIE has established uh, GC2-74, it is mainly concerned about uh, gonio spectral radiometry of optical radiation sources. Uh, the chairman of this TC is Professor, Fan, Professor Pan. He is our president of Everfine Co um, Corporation. So now Everfine has done a lot of work in this aspect, uh, such as the research in scanning mode, uh, the determination of measurement distance, and uh, etc. These are all details in this work. Mm, I think uh, there is no need to explain them very clearly here. If anyone interested in them, please contact with us. 
uh, we need uh, international cooperation and uh, contributions that will be very welcome. Uh, now, someone may afraid there are so many quantities to be made for our LED products. Maybe we have to buy a lot of management equipment. In fact, not. Uh, FN has developed a GOR 5000 4 field speed gonio photometer. This product can not only measure total luminous blocks, uh, lumin luminous intensity distribution, but, uh, uh, but also can measure special color distribution, even luminous distribution. Besides, it has integrated the um, far field measurement and the near field measurement. So that's very important. The function of this product is very powerful. And this is a sketch of this product. Uh, the sample will be mounted here, and it will rotate around this z-axis. So the burning position of the sample will be kept unchanged. Uh, for far field measurement, the light will be reflected by the first mirror and the second mirror, then finally collected by the detector. Because the first mirror and the detector are mounted on the same rotation arm, so there will be no synchronization problem. That's uh, very important. The measurement accuracy will be improved greatly. Uh, for near field measurement, there are three kinds of detectors. They are photometer head, spectroluminometer, and imaging luminous meter. They can meet all kinds of measurement requirements. Uh, this product has been granted by U.S. <coughs> patents and China excellent patents. Usually, a uh, China excellent patent is very hard to obtain. Uh, except for photometric and uh, calorimetric performance, the evaluation of LED lifetime and the thermal characteristics are also very important. Uh, according to the Calico reporter, uh, the evaluation of lifetime has been paid the most attention in recent years. Besides, uh, US, uh, US Federal Trade Commission has published the FTC Light Infax label. This is a new label. In the, this new label, the lifetime of lighting products shall be given. So a measurement for lifetime will be necessary. Mm, in the aspect of life test, now there are mainly two evaluation systems. That they are IES standards and IEC standards. Uh, like this standard, IES LM80, uh, it has been mentioned by Nico. Uh, they are very famous. Uh, it is mainly about uh, the measurement uh, for looming maintenance. After we have the data of lumen maintenance, we can make a project, light projection according to TM21. However, it should be pointed out, uh, these two standards are only applied for LED arrays, packages, and uh, models, but not including LED lamps and uh, luminaires. So, IES will publish another two important standards. They are LM84 and TM28. Uh, the first one has been in ballot. I think uh, they will publish uh, soon, maybe next year. And uh, the later one is still in draft now. So here, I think uh, we could have a quick knowledge about a uh, live test. According to the requirement of LM80, Mm, we should uh, make an uh, initial measurement of the sample to get uh, the initial values of photometric and uh, calorimetric uh, uh, quantities. Then we could uh, divide the sample into three groups. Then they shall be aged at uh, three specified temperature. Uh, 
uh, at least uh, I believe 1,000 hours it shall be taken out and uh, be measured. So, so the looming maintenance and uh, failures will be recorded. Uh, after we having the data of looming maintenance, we could have made a live projection according to standard of PM21. Uh, this work is mainly based on these two models. Uh, I think the details uh, is, uh, is no need to introduce here. Uh, if uh, anyone interested, we could uh, discuss the after the conference. So this uh, is the main idea of these standards about uh, the live test. Uh, as to main uh, maintenance instrument, and uh, this is uh, equipment produced by Alfine. Uh, this is also the solution of Alfine Test and Calibration Center. It has been uh, dated by MVLAB. MVLAB is a uh, uh, national uh, accreditation program of the US. It's uh, very famous uh, around the world. Mm, so this is the uh, main result of Lumi maintenance measured by the equipment we mentioned above. <coughs> From this figure, we can see as the increase of temperature, the light output will decrease more quickly, just uh, as said as nickel. So the lifetime is quite dependent on temperature. In fact, not only lifetime, but also other performance are also dependent on temperature. <coughs> as uh, with the increase of junction temperature, there is a uh, light output and the lifetime will decrease. And then the color, CCT, and the peak wavelength will shift. So it's very important to have a knowledge about the thermal characteristics about the product. Here we could have made a measurement of thermal resistance. Uh, if the environment temperature is fixed, the junction temperature is mainly dependent on its thermal resistance and its power. Besides, we could also make an analysis of thermal structure. If we have made a thermal structure, we could learn about the thermal resistance of each part in the product along the heat flow path. That will be very useful. Uh, in the aspect of um, thermal resistance measurement, there are, we could reference to JESD 51 series. They are all about thermal resistance measurement. They are published by JEDC. JEDC is Joint Electron Device Engineering Council. It is also famous. Uh, so here, I think uh, we could uh, just have a quick knowledge about uh, thermal resistance. Uh, thermal resistance is defined as uh, like this. Uh, this is the ratio of temperature between junction and the reference point to the dissipation power. So if we made an analogy between thermal resistance and uh, electrical resistance, we find uh, they are very similar to each other. So this analogy will help us have a better understanding about the thermal resistance. So if we have established a thermal model, we could have made an analysis of thermal resistance, a thermal structure. Uh, so this is an example of the result of analysis. And uh, this is called the uh, cumulative structure function. In this function, the broad region, like this here and here, means the thermal capacity is very small, while the thermal resistance is large. So, such as the interface between each two parts or the interior defects. While the steep region, like here and here, means the inverse, such as the chip, Mantle, uh, mantle substrates, and etc. So, according to uh, structure function, 
we will obtain the thermal resistance of each part in the product. That will be very useful, and this will help us to improve the uh, quality of the product. And uh, this is a uh, instrument for thermal resistance measurement. Uh, the transient measurement speed for junction temperature can be as fast as one microsecond. It definitely meets the requirement of standards. Uh, besides, it has integrated uh, the optical radiation measurement. Uh, it can also analyze the structure functions. So it's, uh, it will be very useful for, for your product. Uh, at last, I will give a short uh, introduction about our test and calibration center. Uh, in our center, all the key equipment are uh, produced by Everfine Corporation. Now the center has been granted by Amilab and Sina certificates, also recognized by EPA and Lighting Facts. That means uh, now the test report given by this equipment will be accepted by, uh, by all the manufacturers, uh, uh, test centers all around the world. That's very important. Uh, our center is aimed to provide uh, calibration services for measurement equipment, uh, equipment and uh, standard lamp. Also, it can provide uh, a comparison test uh, with very high accuracy. So if anyone is interested in measurement technology or our products, you could go to the exhibition. There is an exhibition for our products. So, okay, that's all. Thank you very much. <laughs>